Hi guys. It is another frosty midwinter night here in mid-November in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here at Bugs in a Jar Farm where it is a Thursday night, November, what are we, 17th, 2022. So, uh, I'm a little bit chagrined to admit, I don't know guys, I have been holding up in the tiny house getting sucked into this uh, new series on Netflix about Graham Hancock and anybody listening to a channel called Collapse Chronicles who is not familiar with Graham Hancock, you really need to fix that. The guy is... Uh, he is controversial, shall we say, and uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to push the envelope uh, too far here at Collapse Chronicles, talking about the wild and crazy ideas of uh, Graham Hancock as they relate to uh, civilization and collapse and all of that. But uh, <clears throat> I will highly recommend this series on Netflix. But that is not an endorsement that I agree with everything that Graham Hancock has to say. But I do agree with a whole lot of it, particularly his opinion of mainstream archaeology. But we're going to leave it at that. <coughs> You can go over there to Netflix and entertain yourself. So uh, I'm about halfway through. And so before I continue my nighttime uh, descent into Graham Hancock, uh, some would say lunacy, some would say fantasy, some would say straight ahead journalistic research. We're going to pause here. For just a few minutes, and uh, instead of talking to Graham Hancock, we're going to go hear from my uh, fellow collapsitarian who writes regularly for Counterpunch, my old buddy Robert Hunziker. I have had the pleasure of interviewing Robert Hunziker more than once here on Collapse Chronicles. You can find my interviews with him elsewhere, but uh, like Myself, Robert is a, uh, he's a big fan of mangabay.com also, so this is going to be kind of my, I guess, my prequel to my full Manga Bay roundup tomorrow, but you might recall last week I made a very brief mention that the World Wildlife Fund has come up with a brand new report. You know, they, they come out, they came out with their Dying Planet Index 2022 a few weeks ago. And then uh, last week, they, they did like just a special edition, I guess, of that one called the Dying Amazon uh, Report 2022. And Manga Bay covered it. And I was actually thinking about making a rant about, you know, actually bringing the report uh, and going through the report. But uh, I am thrilled to see you over here at Counterpunch that Robert Hunziker has done my job for me and he has done his synopsis or analysis of uh, the dying Amazon 2022 report. So I'm going to turn over today's Chronicle of the Collapse to uh, Robert Hunziker letting us know what the World Wildlife Fund has to say about the dying Amazon. Take it away, Robert Hunziker and the World Wildlife Fund. <clears throat> okay, the World Wildlife Fund issued a new dying Amazon report 2022. The eye-opening report defines a horror story of human destruction of the world's largest rainforest. There is no other way to look at it. 
commercialization of the Amazon rainforest is rampant in a pattern of ignorance amidst reckless abandon with a level of stupidity that is nearly beyond comprehension. As the iconic nature reserve, I'm not sure the Amazon, the iconic nature reserve has been pushed to the edge of ruin. It is hard to believe that pure ignorance and greed could wreck the world's most critical asset, but it is happening way too rapidly. According to the World Wildlife Fund report, 35% of the Amazon rainforest is either totally lost or highly degraded as uh, Manga Bay and I reported last week. Is the, the main 35% either completely gone or one step away from, uh, you know, being obliterated off the face of the planet. Quoting the report <clears throat> directly, the situation has begun to show signs of nearing a point of no return. Seasons are changing. Surface water is being lost. Rivers are becoming increasingly disconnected and polluted, and forests are under immense pressure from increasingly devastating waves of deforestation and fire. This could lead to irreversible change in the near future. Close quote. Uh, uh. Then he mentions a fellow that I had the pleasure of interviewing a couple of years ago who unfortunately died last year. We're going to talk about Thomas Lovejoy. As it happens, going, uh, oh, now he's quoting, uh, okay, so now I guess he's actually quoting uh, Manga Bay. Uh, from last month on an article that I <clears throat> touched on. As it happens, quote, the tipping point, according to studies by Thomas E. Lovejoy, former president of the Amazon Biodiversity Center and Carlos Nobre, Nobel laureate in Brazil's top client, climate scientist, is said to occur, the tipping point, is said to occur when deforestation and degradation combined exceed the threshold of between 20 and 25 percent. I figure that refers to the eastern, southern, and central Amazon. Uh, close quote. So, so Thomas Lovejoy and Carlos Nobre were, were They've are, and, and, I, and I've heard this elsewhere, talking about that, you know, when we've lost 20 to 25 percent of the Amazon, you can kiss it goodbye. And now we have this brand new report saying, guess what? 35 percent. Do your own math, guys. Uh, as stated in the report, there is no scientific consensus on the exact probability of a point of no return because of the massive complexity of the ecosystem. However, it is known that probability increases with deforestation, degradation, and the impact of climate change. Do you think so that the probability increases with deforestation. Anyway, it's only too obvious that the Amazon crisis essentially 
calls for the world to collectively pull together and take whatever actions are necessary to huh, to huh, huh, hopefully underlining huh, underlining huh, underlining huh, huh, underlining huh, huh, underlining huh, huh, hopefully preserve natural resources that are essential for life or face societal chaos. Yes, uh-oh, guys, we have a dog and pony show mentioned here, but I'm going to let this one sneak in. This is part of Robert's rant. That is what COP27, the dog and pony show, is supposed to be all about. But based upon prior dog and pony shows, dating all the way back to 1992, the cumulative impact of 30 years of bombastic hot air has been just that, hot air, as non-stop destruction of the environment and poisoning of the atmosphere continue apace, actually intensifying by the year. Let's get back to the Amazon. He just, uh, I know Robert had fun doing that. He just couldn't resist, you know, uh, if taking pot shots at the dog and pony show. I, I would have, you know, I, I, I could have filled up every rant uh, for the past two weeks taking uh, pot shots. This is why uh, I'm just boycotting it. Like, anyway, back to the dying Amazon report. <clears throat> According to the report, there are now 600 infrastructure projects in operation along Amazon rivers. There are 20 planned road projects. There are 400 operating or planned dams. Meanwhile, numerous mining operations continue to dump chemicals such as mercury into rivers. According to one of these satellite monitoring systems, the pace of commercialization of the Amazon trudges ahead as 4.2 million, 4.2 million square miles of the rainforest was cleared for commercial development last year alone. And by commercial development, obviously, that, that includes uh, agriculture, that includes soybean farming, it includes cattle ranching, it includes gold mining, sugar cane uh, farming, uh, did I say soybean farming and cattle? Well, anyway, I think we all know it, commercialization he's talking about. All right. The upshot of this hell-bent commercialization is already apparent in yet another recent report from the Amazon network of geo-referenced socio-environmental information. That report claims that 26% of the forests have, quote, already irreversibly transformed. So World Wildlife Fund saying 35% either completely trashed or getting ready to be any minute. We have this other report uh, claiming 26% of the Amazon has already been irreversibly transformed. Uh, then he's quoting 
again from uh, a Manga Bay article, which I'm sure I've touched on. Quote, the savannization, I love that word, the savannization of the Amazon is already visible in Brazil and Bolivia, while Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru seem to be heading in the same direction. Close quote. <clears throat> the World Wildlife Fund calls for urgent action requiring massive collaboration worldwide. The World Wildlife Fund advocates following the principles of the, Am the Amazon for Life initiative organized for conservation of 80% of Amazon forests by the year 2025. You know, I've mentioned this uh, Amazon for Life hilarious initiative several times. So we, we have one report saying 35% is gone. We have another report saying 35, I see the first one is 35% is gone. So 65% is still hanging in the balance. We have another report saying 26%, a little more optimistic. So they're claiming that 74% is it so somewhere between 65 and 74% would be the absolute maximum. And yet we have this initiative that the World Wildlife Fund is supporting for conserving 80% of a rainforest that is already somewhere between 26 and 35% gone. I'm not sure they're doing their math very well. In a huh. In a huh. -huh. In a huh. Uh, oh, oh, full message within the clutches of an impending disaster scenario, the World Wildlife Fund says of its own report, quote, the report collects successful experiences implemented by World Wildlife Fund and its partners throughout the biome that can be replicated and scaled. A different future is possible for the Amazon if we collectively act now. There you go. So it's all in Lula's hands to save the Amazon rainforest and the planet. Let's all wish Lula luck and then uh, Robert just can't help himself. <laughs> And then he goes uh, back to trash talking the uh, the dog and pony show, ending up with uh, what will the dog and pony show accomplish? And conclusion: the real truth hurts. We all know damn well what that dog and pony show is going to accomplish. Just take a look. Going back to 1992, as he said, nothing. An ab jack. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to do it. And you see why I would have become a broken record real quick. Is tomorrow the last day of that goddamn thing? Anyway, guys, now that we've checked in uh, with Robert Hunziker, uh, just pretty much uh, chronicling the collapse of the single, um, well, certainly one, one of the, in my opinion, the number one most important ecosystem on planet Earth. Uh, now that we've done that, I'm going to go back to... Uh, my Graham Hancock series on uh, 
on Netflix. Now, Graham Hancock is, agrees 100% with Robert Hunziker and, the, and me and the World Wildlife Fund that the Amazon rainforest is gone. Uh, Graham, now I don't think in this series it, it, it talks about it, but uh, Graham Hancock has had a, uh, a lot to say about uh, the destruction of the Amazon rainforest as a major indicator of the uh, collapse of uh, the planet. Uh, yep. And he would probably say, Graham would probably say that humans deserve it. Anyway, I'm going to go check out. We're going to go over to Turkey with Graham now. Get out there and enjoy the Amazon rainforest while you still can. It's looking more and more like uh, I'm going to be heading to Suriname for the month of February. So uh, I'm going to get a look at... Uh, I haven't seen that much of the Amazon. I've spent... Uh, in the very western edges of, of the uh, of the you know the Peruvian and the Ecuadorian Amazon, I've spent I, I spent about six months uh, down there seeing firsthand the destruction and uh, Suriname to this day uh, has more natural rainforest left in it than any country on the planet. I'm not going to be able to get very deep into it. I'm not as young and as venturous as I used to be, but uh, I am looking forward to seeing Suriname before the last uh, piece of fairly unspoiled piece of the Amazon rainforest follows all the rest of it. Anyway, so I'm going to get out there and enjoy the Amazon rainforest while I still can. And anyone who wants to come join me down in Suriname, uh, come see me. You know how to find me, collapsechronicles at gmail.com. Bye, guys.